So now we're going to discuss enzymes and these is still under proteins because the thing is enzymes, most enzymes are protein in nature although there are already some enzymes which have been discovered which are not protein in nature majority of the enzymes we know and most of the enzymes which are very important in our bodily processes are still um, majorly protein in structure so the importance of enzymes in our bodies is that they speed up reactions which take only milliseconds with enzymes but without the enzymes would take a very long time and for example if we have enzymes that detoxify certain chemicals which are harmful to us if there are no enzymes to speed up the reaction then these toxins would accumulate and in short we die or for example enzymes that speed up the production of ATP for our energy all right if we lack these enzymes we would lose energy we still die <laughs> and that just sums up the very importance of enzymes in our body so since enzymes are catalysts we should know that catalysts are reagents or chemicals that speed up re the reaction by lowering the activation energy and so that's kind of a review of general chemistry so I hope before you take this up you already reviewed some things about catalysts but for this discussion we will focus solely on enzymes as applied to biochemistry all right so when we have enzymes of course we should be able to assume that there's a chemical process or a certain reactant that it speeds up um, in turning from it from reactant to product so let's say that this one in blue is that reactant that the enzyme will catalyze into a product all right so the name of this guy here which the enzyme will catalyze to form a product is the substrate all right this is the reactant again this is the reactant which the enzyme will speed the reaction all right and the enzyme here is obviously the large one this one in green all right but there's this little red thing over here okay most enzymes actually um, as I have said are protein in structure but they are linked to certain small organic molecules or even in organic metals which would allow them to fully function and without these red this red thing over here the enzyme will not work all right so because these red things here are important for the enzyme to function properly these ones are usually named as coenzymes or cofactors the differentiation between the terminologies here is that coenzyme is usually a term applied for organic organic groups and cofactors are inorganic usually metal ions such as magnesium positive 2 all right um, and other metals such as zinc right for example and if we have a coenzyme or cofactor that is very tightly bound to this one such that um, it's very hard for that to be removed from the enzyme the name is a prosthetic group but wait there's more we still have a little more terminology again it is possible for an enzyme to exist without the coenzyme or the cofactor all right if the enzyme exists without its coenzyme or cofactor the name of that uh, enzyme in that state is an apoenzyme all right so if you have an apoenzyme plus the cofactor or the coenzyme the name of the resulting complete enzyme such as this one enzyme plus coenzyme or cofactor the name of that is the holo enzyme and so the holo enzyme is the fully functioning part because as i have said if the enzyme does not have its cofactor or coenzyme which is the apoenzyme that's the apoenzyme it will not really work so the apoenzyme here is supposed to be inactive okay inactive
So as you see here, I, I wrote it, I mean I drew the enzyme, the substrate and the coenzyme slash cofactor in shapes because I want to point out that there's a relation of 3D arrangements between the substrate and the hollow enzyme right here in order for the reaction to be catalyzed. So if I have here the shape of the substrate here, it must fit exactly to a certain part of the enzyme for it to be catalyzed into the resulting product. So the area right here wherein the substrate will bind in the enzyme is named as the active site. And obviously, it's named like that because it is the area where the substrate would stick to the enzyme in order for the substrate to turn into the product. All right. So what does this mean? If we're talking about shapes, all right, and the active site accepting a particular shape only. For example, I have something like this. All right. How about let's just draw a circle. The circle here, or this addition, this other substrate will not fit here. Therefore, this guy will not be catalyzed. It just shows that enzymes pick their substrates. Enzymes cannot catalyze everything. All right. If that's the case, there should only be one enzyme for all substrates in the body. But that's not the case because as we uh, as, as of now, we have thousands, probably hundreds of thousands or even millions of enzymes, all right? Different enzymes catalyzing different substrates. So this means that enzymes have a property of specificity. They, they can only catalyze certain substrates, particularly, particularly substrate, substrates which fit to the active site of that enzyme, all right? So, when we talk about specificity, there are certain degrees of specificity for an enzyme. First is absolute, meaning exactly only one compound and not even its isomers. would be catalyzed so if I have an R isomer of a certain compound which could be catalyzed by a certain enzyme the enzyme if it's absolute will be will not even allow the S isomer of that particular substrate to be catalyzed it will be only selective only for that exact compound but there's another type of specificity known as group specificity all right or selectivity wherein the enzyme would tolerate more than just one substrate but they must have similar structures for example this one we have this um, triangular end here for the substrate if I have, if I draw another substrate, I'll just draw this here, like this one. This substrate here that I just drew is different from this part because obviously they differ in this portion. But since the active site only needs this particular triangular part, which this one and this one has, then this active site could tolerate both of this. And if the enzyme would catalyze both of this, as long as they have this common portion here, the enzyme is said to have group specificity. All right. Now, another thing that we have to know about enzymes is that there are actually two theories that scientists use to describe the characteristic of enzymes, specifically in their specificity. Okay, they, they're, they're kind of asking, why are some enzymes absolute? Why are some enzymes o only selective or they have group se specificity, all right? So, in order for them to, ab to justify absolute specificity, they said that enzymes are kind of, specifically the active site of the enzyme, is kind of a certain um, lock wherein only one key 
would be able to unlock it or to activate or to fit in it. So that first theory is known as the lock and key model. Right? The lock and key model or lock and key theory states that the enzyme is rigid, all right? So that this one, the active site will not change, all right? No matter what substrate goes there. All right? So the the substrate must fit exactly to the active site or else it will not activate the enzyme or else it I mean or I mean it will not be catalyzed by the enzyme but there are actually times where in for example um, right, this is a paper here I draw an enzyme here all right enzyme here then I have a substrate here it's circle of course this one would not fit because the active site is this one all right the circle will not fit in but some propose that as the substrate gets closer and closer for example it becomes very close it becomes like this close what would happen is that the active site of the enzyme would adjust to accommodate the substrate so this time obviously the active site is not anymore rigid because here it it alters its conformation all right that's not rigid so the name of this one is the induced fit model because as what i have drawn the moment that the substrate comes near the active site the active site would try to fit into it right so the substrate would induce the change in the configuration or the conformation of the active site in order to fit in so here Again, the induced fit model has an active site that could alter the conformation in order to accommodate the incoming substrate. Okay. So, one last thing regarding the basis of enzymes is that other than a substrate, there might be another thing, alright, or there might be a secondary sort of substrate uh, as compared with the target or primary substrate that would alter the entire enzyme. For example, this one in blue is the substrate that would be catalyzed by this enzyme. But here the enzyme has two active sites. This is the first active site and this is the second active site. And for example, we have another compound right here which would actually fit into the second active site all right there is a possibility that upon binding oh, upon binding let's say yeah let's say this one has already binded to the enzyme what would happen is that it would dictate No more ink. It would dictate a change in conformation of the first active site. Alright? And that would now affect the binding of the primary or the, f the other active site with the substrate. Alright? So, the name of this effect wherein the active site here is altered by binding of another compound to another active site is known as the allosteric effect and it could go two ways if the allosteric effect will enhance the active sites binding to the real substrate then that would be known as allosteric activation but if the allosteric effect will change the active site in such a way that it will reduce the binding with the substrate here it will be obviously known as allosteric inhibition and this is very important because we see a lot of allosteric effects all right 
that would alter the substrate all right without actually binding to the real active site all right so that's it for enzymes next we will discuss about the different types of enzymes examples of enzymes and the kinetics of these enzymes